what up people how's it going this is Bharat here welcome back to yet another video we are going to be continuing on with the Deno flutter series so this video we did learn a couple of things in the previous two videos was first one was how to set up your Deno server and second one we did learn about the rest apis and we connected it with the flutter uh, application but this video is going to be a little bit more complex in the meaning that now we're going to be moving all the data that we had in the previous video to a db so when you move something to a DB, we need to know if there is applicable drivers for that specific framework. I'm going to be taking you through an already existing or created Deno MySQL uh, driver that is going to be uh, used for connecting to our MySQL workbench. And when we have, once we have connected them to the uh, driver and you connected the driver to the uh, database that we have locally, I'm going to be showing you how to transfer data between them. So there are going to be a lot of steps involved. So I'm going to be dropping all the important timestamps in the description below. Make sure you want to check it out. So the first thing that we're going to do is to obviously download the MySQL. I'm going to be using the Mac for development here. So I hope you guys also do that. If you are not using Mac, you, if you're using Windows or Ubuntu, the steps are pretty much similar you just have to get it to start mysql to start and from there on i'll be taking you guys through the proper steps so let's get this thing started so what you have to do is obviously download your mysql and make sure that it's obviously available as you can see i have downloaded my mysql and it is available as well and i also started the mysql instance so if you download and you are actually installing it in your uh, in your desktop once you do that you'll be taking through a screen that is similar to this so this screen, you have to stop MySQL and initialize my initialize DB. So what you have to do is first things first, uh, make sure that you are initializing DB to a pre or the legacy password protection system. So I'll, sh I'll show you guys what exactly I mean here. So I'm going to be going through the initialize database. As soon as you start your uh, MySQL DB, make sure you go through the uh, initialize database structure. So where you, you have two uh, options that are going to be presented to you. First is going to be use strong password encryption and the second is going to be use legacy password encryption. Unfortunately, we are going to be making use of the legacy password encryption only. That is primarily because Deno does not have yet the support for uh, protecting the uh, newer version of process, password protection from the MySQL. This is for, true for both MySQL, PostgreSQL and even your uh, MariaDB. So all of these are going to be still using the older versions or supporting the older versions of password protection. Meaning there isn't, there isn't no, there is there's a pending bug that is going to be fixed which is requiring to connect with your latest MySQL DB. So, so this is as on July 2020. I'm not sure what is going to happen in the future. So make sure that you stay staying tuned on that aspect. So once you're done with that, you have initialized your DB. The next step is to obviously uh, start your uh, MySQL server and directly jump into making use of the terminal. So I already have the terminal here. So I've already played around with the Flutter and all the stuff. So what I'm going to be doing is to obviously take you guys to the, this important uh, command here. I will drop this command in the description. Make sure you're doing this very, very correctly. So you have to start with your, so when you go through your installation phase, you'll be taken through a space where you have to enter a root password. So make sure you do that, install it properly and remember the password as well, which is going to be very, very useful now. So make sure you log in or you're going to be accessing the MySQL through the terminal. I'll show you guys how easy it is to log into the terminal. Just put this command and type the password. For me, it's code on monk again. So I've entered the password and it's going in and it's going to be taking me through a MySQL shell. So the MySQL shell, you can do a lot of stuff here. You can create all your, you can put the queries that you did learn from basic MySQL queries and create your passwords and create your databases and tables and all of that sort. So I'm going to be creating a very simple database here. Let me call it a database of a shop and I'll just, it's done. So it's created a database for me. So either you can do this or download your MySQL workbench and create these databases and tables through your GUI, which is, whichever is easy for you. I'm going to be doing continuing on writing my database queries. The first thing is I've already created my database. So I'll just put show databases. And as you can see that the shop database is here. I'll tell you why I'm going to be depending on the shop database in a couple of minutes time. Next thing that you're going to do is obviously create a table. So creating table is very easy in uh, the MySQL, the, the standard query notation is obviously to create table. You, you have all these queries available online at just a touch of a finger. Just Google it and if you are stuck with that, you are going to be making use of those MySQL queries only. Let's do this first here. We are going to create a table and we need to be making sure that we are pointing to the shop database. So shop dot, I'll call it shop items. And I need to be now giving 
the database or the table uh, the, the the different structure that is going to have the first the column that it is going to have is obviously the name and i am picking this exactly from the previous video so let's for now sake understand that this is why we are trying to move to the db so i am hoping you guys are coming from the previous video if you aren't we did a very quick thing of where we had a local data in our uh, ts file controller.ts file and move this data and show it to the user so what we're going to do now is to move all the data to the db and see how it works so first things first we need to create a name price and quantity that's going to be the table's key values or the table's column so you're going to be doing the name and it's going to be var care for sure right uh, i'll give it a 40 var care and important thing is that it shouldn't be null the next thing that i'm going to be giving is the uh, price which is going to be an int so i'm going to be giving it an int and it also shouldn't be null so the next thing i'm going to be giving is a quantity so make sure to give the quantity properly again int and not null so hit the enter and you have created the table all you have to do is just now do uh, oops i forgot the command it should be show tables no database selected so first i have the uses i'll use the shop and now i'm going to be saying show tables right so obviously awesome so it's it's it has created the table shop items for me and that's where we're going to be using next thing is now to obviously enter some value inside the shop table so you can do is select asterisk from uh, shop items and it's it's an empty value right awesome so we're going to be now entering some values putting some values into the db these are very basic structural setups that we have to do there is no other way and so what we're going to do is now insert the command insert uh, into shop items so what it has to do is you need to specify the column names first and space values and give the values so i'm going to be giving the name and the, the next column that we are going to be using is going to be the price and quantity so the values are in the same order it's going to be a biscuit 25 500 enter right now if you do it you can see the data is present there so i'm going to quickly do that for the rest of the stuff awesome so quickly done that i've entered the, these three values inside my database and everything's pretty much set up so the prerequisite is done next up that i'm going to do is quickly go and connect our uh, deno server to the database and see how the transaction is going to be happening all right so this is going to be the uh, the the application the project that we already have right now quickly going over to what we did in the previous video we had a server which was running which is making use of that couple of routes the first route was a response route just to check if the server was up and running when we made made use of the oak middleware the oak middleware took care of getting any request from the user converting it to possible response that user has to see and throw the out throw out the specific response to the routes so these are called as routes and the routes are going to obviously have a specific day it's going to perform a specific action and in this example it is performing an action of getting the value from this data and showing it to the user specifically with pretty much very simple uh, routes that we did in the previous video so what we're going to do is now quickly move this data to the database so what we have to do is create a very simple file let me call it as a database.ts and the first thing first what we have to do is import a very simple deno database server a deno database uh, library so what we're going to do is import this line here which is going to be the deno.landx mysql mod.ts so this mysql is going to be the officially available uh, plugin that is going to do the work for us so we're also going to be importing the client uh, the client class from there and just getting it things started straight away so first we first we need to do is create a simple client variable so all you have to do is do an await new client dot connect and this is dot connect and this is where the magic happens we have to say what are the username what is the password and what is the database that you have wanted to connect to and what is the host so let's do it in the specific order that i told right now so the host name is obviously local host right followed by the username 
is going to be root for me it's yeah it's root for me and i don't have to hide the password it's just a simple local db password i kept the score among and finally what we need to do is so what database should it connect to i need to give you the database name in this example it's shop okay i think this key is wrong here it should be db host name username password db all right awesome so this is done we have connected it so what we have to do is obviously try and do a console.log and check if it is connecting properly what we can do now is do a simple deno run i love net you may be not need it not ts see it's connected it it's connecting to it properly and it has done the work so what did i do here quickly what i did here was to uh, run the database file alone specifically as a standalone deno script and it, it did still work so what we're going to do next is to run our simple query which is this query here i'm going to be getting the data from that so let me go uh, all data and i'm going to be executing the select query that we did in the db terminal so here we did the select asterisk from shop items query right we're going to be doing the same thing here as well how do you do that just type select dot query and you can put this here select asterisk from make sure you already connected it to the shop database so you got to directly do the shop items so if you are requesting to get it just log it here to see what happens always given a wait this will this could want to take them some time to come out so no it's always did you see that so it's connected to the wait it is giving me the data that i want and also printing the client i am might i'm going to be removing this so technically it's printed the value that i want and it is giving it and printing it in the console log as well technique it's it's pretty much working so it's exactly getting the data from here and showing it to me here now all i have to do is just return this data as part of my controller and my application is done so i'm going to, i'm going to be removing this from here and instead now exec uh, creating a simple method called as so i'm just going to get this from here and i'm going to be returning the all data how as it comes so also i'm going to be doing is export my get all shop from db and pretty much that's it so what i'm going to do is go to controller and import in this space call the dot of it so db and pretty much that's it so what i have done is now created a database or ts file and integrated the structure here and let me remove this line here it's not required anymore so what is going to do is it's going to quickly get it from the database fetch it and send it out as a response which is going to be controlled here so we have abstracted the controller from the database pretty much very simple code again i'm not trying to say it's the best Thing that I've created or anything of that sort, very simple to create. You just have to abstract it wherever you want to abstract it. So make sure all this stuff is properly created. We have to import it properly. The import statement is wrong here. All right, so this is it. Uh, we've done the stuff. Let's try to run the Deno server and check how it is running. So I need to do Deno hello 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 net and run the server. so it appears all right okay it's throwing some error it's saying that constant did you mean to mark this function as a sync i just missed the wait and it screwed up the entire thing so all right so that's what we have done so we have gotten the database value uh, hooked it up with the controller already that is present and make sure to add the async await which is very very important we do see about that a lot in the flutter videos as well so async await is going to be the future again it's the asynchronous programming way of doing it if you have an async data it's going to return a promise as such in deno and what it has to what it means that it's a promise of something in the future so you have to wait for that and then get the value all right so this is it that's the pretty much the structure of it 
Now what I'm going to do is obviously check if it is working with my Flutter application as well. We did learn about that in the previous video. Let me take it up and put it here. So what I'm going to be doing is create a very simple future builder widget here. And the future builder widget is taking, uh, it's going to do make use of the HTTP uh, package or the library and post a get request call to my uh, local API. So again, the last video I talked talk to you guys about why we have to be making use of the 10.0.2.2 instead of the local host. That is because the Dart programming, the Dart language in its heart is converting a uh, local host and it's resolving local host to only 10.0.2.2 and not 127.0.0.1. So that is the difference here and shouldn't be using the word localhost also. And what we are doing is again waiting for the data from the service or from the API and just checking if it is a status code 200 meaning it's a proper data. It is not error data, no 404s or 400s coming from the server. And once we confirm that we are returning the body. So as we go down, what we are also going to do is just print this entire, I mean sorry, it's put it everything inside a text. So we'll just run this here, I'll just do uh, I think I already have the uh, thing running, so I'll just show you guys what is happening. So technically we are getting the data from the server and we are going to do a very simple get protocol or the get request. So all, also what you can do is just do a json.decode and we know that the snapshot dot data can now be accessed this way. So we can do is data make sure i don't forget the text it's outside the text not outside all right so we are we can now do is dot zero that i can get the name of the first one so i'll just run it for you I'll do the request and voila i've gotten the biscuit and that is pretty much what is coming from the uh, get request from the server as well so that's how simple simple we have done it we have now integrated our entire database with our deno server now all you can now go forward to do is create your own insert API that you want. Now go just fix your uh, server, just go here, go to your database, create a simple method called as insert some value into DB, call it specifically from some other API or run it specifically and voila you're done. You're creating databases in a fraction of a second and also integrating it with the server without you know any problem. That's going to be the basic work and that's also going to be the basic structure of how you can create and integrate your Deno DB. In particular, I've used the MySQL DB. There's also a libraries or uh, the drivers for other DBs like PostgreSQL and Maria and MongoDB. So you can check it out if you want to. That's it for this video. Hope you guys did understand and liked what I shared with you guys. Uh, if you did, do not forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Share with your friends. Let me know what you guys thought about in the comment section below. Let me meet you in the next video. Something really cool is coming up. Until then, Bharat, peace out. Have a super awesome day.